that's going to do it for football fan cave max i know we're finally uh getting closer and closer to this massively hyped fight and uh i'm, I'm excited to hear about what you got to say yeah i don't know how massive the hype is right now for makashev Oliveira. i know how high it should be and that's what today's segment is going to cover just the broad strokes of what about this fight is so intriguing so fascinating to me because i really over the last five years can't think of many that come close like really just like habib connor is the main one uh and that one was more about hype like 95 percent hype five percent like style entertainment whereas this one a lot more of the what's coming is the records and what these two have done inside the octagon more than any bad blood but let's start um with the habib side of things because he's kind of the foundation of bringing this hype just what his career was the like unquestioned dominant perfection that he brought every time he stepped into the octagon never really looking in danger, never looking in trouble, always imposing his will uh, to do it consistently throughout your career. Doesn't matter how high the level of your opponents get is just unheard of and absurd. Um, but luckily for us fans of mixed martial arts, there is a cloth that these Dagestanis are cut from and Islam Makhachev comes from that exact same one. Um, one knockout loss in his career, uh, second fight in the ufc i believe since then a perfect 10 and 0 and everything outside of that loss um not carbon copy of habib but just so similar in the opponents never really showing anything that makes you think he's losing the fight for more than five seconds it feels like there's no way for them to stylistically grab a hold of the fight a lucky shot is all they're gonna have um, the grappling always seems several levels above. And Makashev has maybe fought better grapplers than Habib did. Um, Armand Sukarian, Davi Ramos, even Tiago Moises, all really good grapplers. None of them, they all, they were less far behind Makashev than other guys have been that we've seen. But still, like, if they breed better grapplers in the division, we haven't. Like, we've never seen one of these guys look outmatched, look one, two steps behind. They always somehow are ahead. And for Makashev, especially, on that frees up so much else of the game. In the Moises fight, we really saw how the pressure of the takedown um, lets him come into his own on the feet. He spent, I think, the, almost all of the first round and a good chunk of the second, or a good chunk of the third then, on his feet, taking his time, slowly backing Moises up against the fence. And when that take, and not in any danger because he was able to stay far enough back to not worry about the striking, uh, darting quickly and the split second of indecision of is he darting in to go for a takedown or to punch me in the face uh, keeps the defender from reacting properly to the timing and uh, gives Makashev such ease that, like, I watched the last four fights he had in. Uh, so Dober, Moises, Hooker, and Green. And th there wasn't one moment where it looked like the opponent really had a good chance to land anything. I don't think I saw a single submission attempt to go up against him. Every takedown I saw him go for, he hit. If, if I don't think an opponent stuffed a single one. So that's Islam Makashev. He mixes up the takedowns to keep them guessing, to keep them so efficient. Once he's on the ground, opponents rarely get up. They're at risk of being submitted if they make one wrong move, as we saw with Hooker, as we saw with Moises and uh, Dober, though those took more time. If they just stay there, they're going to get pounded, like we saw Green. It, it's Khabib 2.0. No one's been able to do anything about it. And it might be that he's been the best guy in the division since Khabib retired. But for all that said, there was never an opponent for Khabib like Charles Oliveira. Um, almost like Cinderella meets Jack and the Beanstalk fairy tale story where a career journeyman who was four losses two wins in the six fights before the win streak he's on right now oh but that win streak's 11 
uh, something just changed after he lost to Paul Felder. Uh, and you didn't know at the start of the run because that was his career. He always beat the guys he was really supposed to beat and then struggled against the top guys where um, it's had a matter of inches, like edge to edge, top to top, slightest margin, um, the willpower when everything else is so close is what's going to make a difference. Those were the fights. Charles Oliveira seemed to always get behind it and not be able to find his way back in. Uh, but this run that he's on, we saw more stand up. You, I remember him hurting Clay G- Guida, uh, Daniel Tamor, I think, on the feet. Two guys who can strike and hurt you before he cho- found the submission off that damage. And this time when he got to the highest level and he faced adversary, he rolled with it and outdid it. Uh, in all three title shots he's had. Michael Chandler, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, all three of the most terrifying guys in that weight class you could block anyone in an octagon with. Um, Not many people on the planet last two minutes in there without getting knocked out. All of them landed and hurt Charles Oliveira. I think they were all hooks as well. Every time he's in the pocket, he's stepping out, he's mistimed it a little, and they just catch him. There's a second delay, he falls. But I swear, every time... Before his uh, body's even on the ground, his head's there lucid. Every time you see, as he falls, his head is alert, looking at the opponent, his guard is up. He gets hurt, but he gets hit, but he doesn't get hurt. He he's never seems to be rocked and out of sorts where the opponents are looking for the finish and there's a decent chance they could get it. Um, Wow, this, I haven't done a UFC breakdown this long in a while. It's a bit out of rhythm. And it doesn't, if they follow him, they're running into a huge chance of getting submitted on the ground. So you see that buys him a second or two more to recover. Gaethje won nothing to do with it. Poirier didn't look too interested either. Uh, Chandler didn't even get that kind of drop that would have let him into the get into the guard. So we're not sure there. But just these, this threat that he's become, like, on the feet, you can hit him, drop him. He's just going to get right back up. Scary power in his hands, as we've seen against Chandler, against Gaethje, against so many other guys all the way up to this run. And then I don't have the pedigree to even get into what makes his jujitsu so exciting and terrifying. Maybe we'll try and do a more technical breakdown a little on some other stuff later. Um, but for now, just every time it's gone to the ground and someone's been there, they've ended up tapping out. Uh, Dustin Poirier, a, the most scary recent example of that, where just he like turned the wrong way into the fence of Poirier and it let Oliver get on the side. And then it was just a step away from there to the back. And then he was up on the back. And then it was just a matter of slowly readjusting the arms until Poirier was getting choked out. And it seems like the only mistake he made in that entire sequence was presenting his side instead of his front at the cage. And then it was just inevitable step by step. I don't know if that quite sets what I'm trying to set here, talking about this contrast in styles, but in Islam Makashev, you have a guy who's just relentlessly never in the danger zone, always getting himself one step closer to what seems like an inevitable victory uh, where you can resist, but you can't fight back. Charles Oliveira is a wild man who accepts the chaos, walks through it, and then throws it back twice as hard to knock out some of the most dangerous guys in the division. Um, Against any opponent that wasn't Makashev but had the same style of skill, I'd look at the strength of both opponents that Oliveira has had and give him a huge edge over Makashev just for that. But because of what we saw with Khabib, where in retrospect, he was the best guy in the lightweight division for years more than he was crowned champion, I can't say for sure that that's not been the case with Makashev. And I Like, I'd still give Oliveira the edge just because Poirier, Gaethje, Chandler is such a more terrifying list of heads to present than Green, Hooker, and Moises. But it's way less of an advantage than I'd give in any other situation. Like, 
the essence is that any time, even when Makashev has Oliveira on the ground, he's still in danger. When he's on his feet, he's absolutely in danger. When he's in the clinch, he's going to be in danger from those knees, from Oliveira jumping into a leg lock or trying to get a flying guillotine out of it. And we just, this guy, this style of fighter where we've never seen in trouble throughout the time in the octagon, that's going to be such a new thing. And that's what really has me excited about this fight. So yeah, we'll get into some more nitty gritty tape stuff another time. But I think Islam Makhachev has been an unstoppable force. And no matter what anyone's thrown at Charles Oliveira on this most recent run, they found him an immovable object. And this fight coming up with the 11 versus the 10 fight win streak is the most true of that um, hypothetical phenomenon that I can think of any matchup for. And that was what has me so excited for it uh, as I'll be talking throughout the rest of the month, but you can rest your ears until then.